My God, guys, this looks really messed up over here. friends, Robert here with Coastal GX, back at South Padre Island, right after this storm that rolled by. We had a tropical depression roll by. Uh, I don't know if it caused a lot of damage or not, but I sure want to come out here and find out, take a look for myself, and uh, just enjoy the day. Let's see uh, how it turns out. I won't spoil it for you, but I learned a couple of things about South Padre Island on this trip. I hope you stick around for the entire video. Hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really helps out the channel and encourages me to bring you more content. Oh, it is absolutely gorgeous. So much space to drive along the beach and uh, not to mention how beautiful the ocean looks right now. It's so so green so beautiful aqua color i would be very curious as to what has been washed up if anything or maybe it everything is going to look a little cleaner uh or or what the situation is going to be also the i guess the stronger part of the storm hit the northern part of the island so maybe where the east cut is so i gotta make it to the east cut or at least I'm gonna try. I don't know, you know, how, how easy it's gonna be or what, but I need to make it all the way to the East Cut to be able to, you know, kind of assess, you know, uh, if there were any changes or, or what. So that's gonna be interesting to see. I'm at around mile eight, and uh, this is what I was talking about. This, these are the things that I was looking for you know, I still haven't seen anything really interesting that catches my eye, but you know, check this out. As I was driving by, um, I saw this, just this little part of a tree trunk sticking out. Now this, this is still considered to me, this would still be considered like part of where people drive. Yeah, it is further away from the uh, ocean shore and it is closer to the dunes, but remember if it's high tide, this thing could be partly concealed by sand or whatever. And yeah, even with my bumper, even the way the setup is, if I hit this, there's gonna be some damage, man. So somebody was a very kind soul and they painted the top of it red to try to you know, distinguish it from the sand. So yeah, that's one thing right there. I thought that was interesting. Let's go. Guys, so I'm here with Andrew and Joel from Prodigy Fishing, and these guys have a different take on the way the storm might impact the beach. What have you guys seen so far? Well, the drive's nice. Everybody saw that right off the bat. Uh, it did change the guts, though. Instead of those nice deep guts that we had before, it's kind of real flat out there with a lot of pockets, which makes dragging the ski in the water really difficult. And also even just walking out there is a little bit more dangerous because you're taking steps and then just falling into pockets out there. Storm definitely did some changes to the sandbars and stuff like that. And, you know, it's just one of the few to come. Thankfully, we didn't get it too bad. But, you know, one of the benefits, it does clear out the drive for us with the high tides and everything. But it does wash up a lot of stuff. As you can tell, there's a lot of tar on the beach and stuff like that. Fishing's been good. We've been we also doing had less good. cutoffs, though, too. Yeah. I guess because before, you know, you get those deep guts, then you get the sandbar and then the deep gut. So the line kind of rubs on the sandbars out there. And this trip, we really haven't gotten many cutoffs compared to other trips. So I think it's kind of flattened it out. Yeah. Oh, that just washed up because of the storm? Well, I, I think, so, but also a lot of these washed up in uh, on pins too. I saw someone post that these were washing up on pins. Uh-huh. But, 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 all but, red tide or but, but also out there, he was, he was starting to smell like that watermelon scent that Ooh. you get. Yeah. You know, from like eight slicks, but sometimes I've also had that smell when there's red tide out there. Mm. 
and we're getting towards September, October, where I mean it blooms every year. But so um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping this is just the storm and not low oxygen levels because literally the last time we had a really bad red tide, yeah. I noticed it was a lot of the weird stuff that was dying, uh -huh. like a lot of the eels and the stargazers and stuff. Yeah, like those were the first things to wash up, and they're washing up in the thousands. So oh wow! Hopefully, it's, it's just the storm and not the beginning of something worse. Yeah. Good observation, guys. If you want to get a badass shark fishing charter, you know where to reach them. I'll put the phone number down below. And so some of the other things that have been washing up, aside from trash, which, yeah, this is, this is sad. Look at it. It's invading this poor crab's house right here. I'm not right. So let's pick this up. Yo, what the hell, man? Why would we have this? Anyway, look at all this. See all this? This is tar. All right? All this tar that's been washing up. And uh, need to find out what's causing this. I mean, I've seen it before in my lifetime, but this is pretty messed up. Okay? So if you guys know what's causing all this tar to wash up or where it's coming from, please share it with me. And here's another little something that, check this out. Look at all that tar sticking to my, ah, my Crocs. Got a coconut over here. That's interesting. So here's another thing that sometimes comes out to show itself off. It's uh, this is all steel. I want to say it's about a foot off, foot from the sand. And uh, yeah, this could spell. If you guys are hugging this area, you're probably gonna run into some problems. Then you have this other remnant from who knows what. Oh, by the way, guys, the water feels great, man. The water is beautiful. Here's my tire. Here's all this uh, iron. Yeah, this is not moving. Sharp edges, rusty. Two beams right here. Yeah, this was not would not be good for your uh, this isn't going to be good for your for your tires for sure and uh even with my um uh underbody uh armor even with the skid plates that's not going to help much so i made it over here there's the east cut jetties and away from the shoreline you can see right here there's this debris all this debris that's collecting a few yards away you see where my truck's right there and uh, this is where all the trash i guess from the tide you know ended up <clears throat> so let's take a look at some of the stuff that's washing up here you know most of it is you know you got some seaweed here a pair of sunglasses i'll be picking that stuff up and you know throwing them away with some hair stuff i don't know what the heck that is other plastics that are not good plastic bottles um got some coyote or something um gloves more glasses damn everybody you need lanyards for your glasses over here there is another starfish just like the boys over there prodigy uh team found over there and another starfish over here so they're washing up let me see what else do we have no sandals or just trash yeah there again that's at least uh three starfish and uh, within a few feet well there is something pretty in here look at this shell it's really nice the one thing that actually belongs out here Leave you right there, buddy. My God, guys. 
this looks really messed up over here uh, let me see if I can bring the drone in just to take a look this is right at the east cut if you guys know what this is please share it with me Hey guys, so I made it out to the East Cut. Here are the jetties right here. People enjoying themselves, having good old time fishing. But I wanted to show you what this tar has done so far. See, it's sticking to the truck right there. You have some more tar residue coming off right here. And I have to uh, clean this up. This is messed up. Okay, so I decided to walk this area where all that dark stuff is concentrated. It just seems to be, you take a closer look guys, it just seems to be like shredded, shredded uh, uh, seaweed or grass rather. You see that? Yeah, so definitely looks nastier from up there but once you get down to this level it's just grass looks like grass <laughs> see that of course all that's going to cling to you but yeah that's what we're looking at but once you get past that area right there it's so beautiful it's a nice turquoise color just past that little area and like i said you can see the seaweed right here concentration it's just like this i don't know maybe a little less than a quarter mile uh the last little stretch right before you get to the jetties with a little online research, I was able to confirm that the washed up sea stars are directly impacted by the rough surf and strong winds. These creatures live burrowed in the sand and severe weather conditions can wash them up on the beach. So it's probably a direct cause of the storm and not red tide. As for the tar, well, that's a natural occurrence documented since the days of the Karankawa native tribes. These tar balls may be annoying, but they were actually used on baskets and other essential things. The Texas General Land Office has stated in reports that natural seepage is most likely the cause, although it's possible man-made oil leaks can be to blame. You may report oil spills to the state at 800-832-8224. It was nice to go and explore and take a look at these, uh, just take my time and be able to look through some of these things that are washing up and uh so now i know that my buddy ray is gonna be somewhere along probably around mile 14 so i'm gonna go and see if i can go hang out with him go say hello and probably spend the rest of the time over there Hey guys, let me tell you about this new piece of equipment. You know, sometimes I highlight some of the gear that I have, and this is the latest one I have. As you can see, it's a, it's a lot smaller, you know, a lot uh, shorter from the top. This is an Isco VL35 Pro S refrigerator or freezer. Isco was kind enough to send me uh, this refrigerator right here. And they're going to be sending me a slide. As you can see, my old Iron Man is just way too small for the footprint of this VL35 Pro S refrigerator. But yeah, <laughs> it's barely hanging in there, but it's hanging in there. 
Uh, let me tell you some features. This is what I love about this fridge. So you have this lid right here on top. It opens up this way, okay? It opens up this way, all right? And it even opens up this way, okay? So for easy access, if you wanna clean it up or whatever you wanna do, it is a 30, 37 quart refrigerator, okay? And uh, right now I have it, it's registering at 39 degrees, which is keeping everything nice and cool in there. Uh, check this out, it has a DC input, okay, where you can connect it to your Jackery, any power station, solar power station. You can connect it, like right now I have it connected to my lens solar uh, panel and my uh, lithium ion battery from Uniwix. AC plug right here if you want to just plug it to the wall. You can even bring this inside your house. Keep it, you know, just to store your uh, beverages or whatever. And this is pretty neat, man. Like right now, you know, I have my GoPros and, and my cameras and my phone. I can just go ahead and use these two USB ports you can see right here. And I can just charge my stuff from there. And of course, it has, you can see the cord right there. That's from my DC. It has another DC port in the back. But yeah, this is uh, really neat. It's got a C-Cop uh, compressor in it. And uh, it is built for off-roading, okay? So I'm out here, you know, going through bumps and all sorts of stuff. This thing can easily, easily handle any of that stuff. So if you guys are interested, I will have the links. And, of course, a 12% discount promo code from Coastal GX. Woo! Hey, man. Fi finally, finally got finally to meet you. Meet you. Yeah. How you doing, ma'am? I'm Robert. I'm Joanna. Yeah. Hi, Joanna. We went to Chevy to try the trail bus, and mm -hmm. guess what? A doctor ordered it this old color. So there's apparently it's orange, only 11 wow. in the nation. Oh, wow. Because it's a special order, not a special edition. You just have to order the color. Oh, wow. Um, but the truck take. I think like six months to arrive, so he went to a F-150, so my luck. I walked to the dealer, I'm like, ah, she's like, I want it, I want it, I want it. I'm like, come on, baby, we need to try vehicles, we need yeah. to make sure this actually works. Yeah, it was yeah. just meant but to be. It's yeah. a badass truck, let me tell you, love differential, work awesome. We're in love with it, it's the color. I upgrade the bumpers so that way I have more clearance yeah. for Big Ben. We do Big Ben every year. Yeah. We, yeah. Um, Gulf Coast Overland. Yeah. There's beautiful people over there yeah. as well. I don't have my tents because I didn't plan to. I take everything off and put it back. Yeah. Yeah, man, I like it a lot. These coastal roads are all we'll ever find. And memories made from trails we left behind. Hey guys, I'm over here at mile 14. Made it over here with Blue Lines 5.0 and his girlfriend, they were camping out out here and they were gracious enough to allow me to come and hang out with them. Ray, you're already getting the carnita asada going here? I do, I do. Look at that, you got a new setup? I do, it's a, a little blue barbecue pit that was I kind of refurbished. Uh, neighbor gave it to me, it was already all rusted out. Yeah? And as you tell, it used to be green, but of course I went with blue. Yeah, and, man. Uh, put a new bottom to it. Yeah, there you go. Keeping it with the brand colors of blue. The blue, blue line 5.0. There you go, man. Got it. Okay, Ray, what do we got going on now? Well, it's that time of day, Robert. I just threw down some ribs. <laughs> some sausage here. And uh, I'm about to go down up. Go down some fajita right here. Beautiful. Beautiful. You so, went compact, like you said, man. This little refurbished. Yes. Little refurbished. Uh, yeah, like he even painted it with the blue because that's his brand color. He loves. And it, it, it's perfect for the little, the little setup here. Just as, as that's a, a lot of meat there. It's a lot of meat. It'll be barbecued and there's some more fajitas and it, it holds the heat. Saves a lot of space a lot of on space your truck. Also. Uh, this is baby blue. Baby blue? Baby blue. <laughs> Blue's at home. The yeah. Baby blue. And, uh, also uh, refurbished the handle. It was all dried out. Yeah. You see, that there's there's something special, man. I was telling Ray, because 
his blue canopy over here, he found that that was discarded, man. Somebody had just given up on this, just like many other frames that you see out here. And that's what Ray does. He likes to pick this stuff up. This one over here, this was going to be trash. It was going to be trash. When but, my neighbor was going to yeah. throw it away, and uh, I just needed a little, a little loving care, and I got it working again. Yeah, Hated man. It. I mean, it's uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, like show perfect or anything, like to put, them, uh, put it anywhere in the museum, you know, but look at this. The Earth, handle, everything is fine, man. Everything works. Everything works. Refurbished, so... Save yourself some money if you have the time. Come, come on, uh, cans of paint, high density paint, spray yeah. paint, and you'll be all right. Damn, that looks good. Good job, man. Look at that. All in this compact, refurbished little barbecue pit right here. that's gonna do it for the video thank you so much for watching now go ahead and go to the description video description and you'll find all my links links to ice co's fridge and my coloring book that's still out there and so much exciting new stuff coming to the coastal GX store yeah I know I've been neglecting it but there's gonna be some cool stuff coming through thank you so much for watching love you talk to you later